I command you, unclean spirit, whoever you are, along with all your minions now attacking this servant of God, that you tell me by some sign your name and the day and hour of your departure. I command you, moreover, to obey me to the letter, I, who am minister of God despite my unworthiness, nor shall you be emboldened or harm in any way this servant of God or the bystanders or any of their possessions. Now that's not exactly something you hear every day, unless you're a particularly busy exorcist. A 2016 article from the UK Telegraph reported that the Vatican Church is currently adding more trained exorcists to its ranks. This is to combat the growing rise in demonic possession that they attribute to more people dabbling in the dark arts, thanks to the information readily available on the internet. The practice of exorcism, the driving out of demons that have possessed a human, is not just an interesting premise for a horror film. The 1973 film, The Exorcist, based on the novel by William Peter Blatty, brought intense attention to the practice that endures today. Although my parents have never let me watch The Exorcist, I have an interest in atypical religious practices and in European history. Today, I'll present a brief history of demonic possession, highlight the incident that inspired the novel, and then demonstrate the Catholic ritual. As the demon and Linda Blair said, what an excellent day for an exorcism. Accounts of demonic possession can be found in most cultures and religions throughout history. According to Olga Hoyt, author of Exorcism, there is evidence dating as far back as 3000 BC that exorcists played important roles in ancient Babylonia, Assyria, Egypt, and India. Exorcisms were also performed in Judaism and Islam. But the religion most famous for exorcists is Christianity, and Roman Catholicism in particular. According to the Bible, their very first exorcist was Jesus Christ himself. The Bible tells the story of a wild man approaching Jesus for help. When Jesus asked the man his name, he replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. Recognizing this man was possessed, Jesus commanded, Go out of the man, thou unclean spirit! The spirits then left the man and entered a herd of pigs, which then jumped into the sea. In the book Possessions and Exorcisms, author Stuart Cowan argues that the practice of exorcism was used by the Catholic Church to, to, to attract many new followers. The ability to cast out demons and cure many of life's problems was a very strong attribute of theirs. This painting by Francisco Goya depicts St. Francis Borgia driving the demons out of a dying man in the mid-1500s. During the European witch hunts, many different forms of exorcism were being used. To combat this, the Vatican Church included a precise ritual of exorcism into the Ritual Romanum, or Roman Ritual, in 1614. This laid out the complete script for performing an exorcism, and outlined the specific phrases and prayers to perform. To become an exorcist, a priest must be officially ordained by a Catholic bishop. Even after they become ordained, they still must receive permission before each exorcism. Permission will not be granted unless they can provide indisputable evidence of demonic possession. Possible signs of possession include speaking in tongues, extraordinary strength, and revulsion at religious items. A well-documented and inadvertently famous exorcism occurred in 1949 and is detailed in the book Possessed by Thomas B. Allen. A 14-year-old boy from Maryland was believed to be the victim of demonic possession. The furniture in his house slid across the floor at night. Pictures and chairs moved around. He even started shouting in Latin, a language which he had never studied. Doctors could come up with no explanation for these symptoms and suggested he be exercised. Although the family was Lutheran, their pastor referred them to a priest. Father William Hughes received permission to perform this exorcism from the Archbishop of Washington. Following the guidelines in the Roman ritual, he prayed, recited psalms, used holy water, and used a crucifix. He repeated this process over 20 times in a period of two months until the spirit finally identified itself as a fallen angel and left the boy. This incident was the inspiration for the novel and film, The Exorcist. I will now demonstrate an exorcism according to the Roman ritual. We'll assume that I am a Catholic priest ordained as an exorcist. The troubled person in question has shown signs of possession, such as speaking in tongues and extraordinary strength for her size. 
She's been to doctors, but they can come up with no explanation for these symptoms. And now the local archbishop has approved the exorcism. I will also need a Bible, the Word of God infused with the power of the Holy Spirit, a crucifix, the primary symbol of Christianity and power of the church, believed to be repellent of demons, and holy water, which is water that has been sanctified by a priest, used in baptisms, and to ward off evil influences. I begin by sprinkling holy water over the possessed and say, Behold water that has been blessed! May life and salvation be ours in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit! Let us humbly implore the mercy of Almighty God, that has passed through the intercession of all the saints, that he will hear the voice of his church for our sister, who is afflicted by dire need. And then I recite the litany of saints. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for her. Saints Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, pray for her. Saint Joseph, pray for her. Saint John the Baptist, pray for her. This part goes on for quite a while, so in the interest of time, I'll skip ahead a bit. The litany is followed by the recitation of one or more prescribed psalms and readings from the Gospels according to John and Mark. In fact, this part is no different from a typical Catholic Mass. The Gospel is followed by the laying of hands. Let your mercy be upon us, Lord, as we have placed our hope in you. Let the enemy hold no advantage over her, nor let the son of iniquity persist in harming her. Then, after reciting the Apostles' Creed and Lord's Prayer, I show the crucifix. Behold the cross of our Lord, begone all hostile spirits. Finally, I launch into a long tirade of imploring God for help and directly commanding the demon to leave. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, I appeal to your holy name, humbly begging your kindness that you grant me help with this and every unclean spirit now tormenting this servant of yours. I cast you out, unclean spirit, along with every satanic power of the enemy, every specter from hell, and all your fellow companions through Christ our Lord. Be gone and stay far away from this servant of God, for it is he who commands you, he who has flung you headlong from the heights of heaven into the depths of hell. I adjure you, ancient spirit, by the judge of the living and of the dead, by your creator, by the creator of the whole universe, by he who has the power to consign you to hell, to depart forth within fear from this servant of God who seeks refuge in the fold of the church. Yield not to my own person, but to the minister of Christ. For it is the power of Christ that compels you, who brought you low by his cross. It is God himself who commands you, majestic Christ who commands you, God the Father commands you, God the Son commands you, the mystery of the cross commands you. Be gone now, be gone, seducer. The Lord, the ruler, comes quickly, kindling fire before him. It is he who will expel you, he who has prepared everlasting hellfire for you and your angels, from whose mouth shall come a sharp sword, who is coming to judge both the living and the dead and the world by fire. Depart therefore, Satan, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Depart through the sign of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. At this point, if the person is still possessed, the exorcist starts over and repeats as necessary. Now, I know this is not exactly something you're going to go and try at home, but there is still considerable interest in exorcism around the world. The BBC recently reported that the Vatican Church cannot keep up with the growing demand for exorcisms and are currently seeking younger priests willing to be trained in the practice. Today, we examined a brief history of exorcism and I demonstrated an abbreviated version. In spite of the growing demand and the popularity of the films, the practice of exorcism is a serious ritual that is rarely approved and only used as a last resort. But when all else fails, 